very interesting tweet thread came out yesterday from uh, one of comic books most talented most uh, celebrated creators artists writers uh, liam sharp here who is uh giving the straight dope the reality of what it's like selling a uh, independent creator owned comic book uh, through the direct market in 2022 starts off here to give you an idea how hard creator owned books are to sell starhenge number five orders came in at 8870 that's it there'll be no reprints if we dip below 7000 we stop making any money we won't make much at all on four five and six so then it's down to how we sell the trade uh, there's another one here. It says number one was at 39,000, but based on the variance, the true number was actually at about 15,000. Number two was 13, and it dropped off after that. You basically have to sell enough of number one to get through the series because later issues won't earn you anything. So what is going on here? Why has the overall readership dropped well if you watch this channel though you know we talk about this a lot uh essentially manga is eating western comics lunch and it's not even close uh if there are any people left in the mainstream reading comic books the overwhelming majority of them are reading a manga why is that happening well i contend it's because the big two marvel and dc the uh the companies that get the majority of foot traffic at, to the conventions in the local comic book stores have spent the last 10 years chasing tiny demographics that uh, people aren't actually all that interested in reading. Despite what these companies will have you believe, the overwhelming vast majority of comic book readers, uh, people interested in entertainment, they don't care about representation. They're mostly ambivalent towards it. Some are against it, but all of them. All people, they just want good stories. Here's a tweet here from Ethan Van Skyver highlighting uh, another person's tweet here. He says, I said questions, well, why don't you just make a new character? And they're here they're saying the quiet part out loud because they won't have the platform an existing character will have. This is the thing. They don't create things, is what Ethan says. Uh, we're not all creative. He's speaking as SJWs. It takes too long to build a platform, so we've ruined what other people have already built in order, in order to spread our poisonous identity politics instead. Uh, this stuff doesn't sell comics. It doesn't keep people reading. It doesn't inspire new readers to jump on board, especially readers who are younger, children. Uh, this is why, unfortunately, so many people are finding it so hard to find readers because the readers just aren't there. They have gone. Uh, placating to this sort of nonsense, it's driven the audience away from comics. So, um, and as well, you know, the new younger readers who might be interested in reading comics, then they go into the comic book store, they don't find anything that matches what they've seen in the MCU. So you've now you've got, uh, you know, decades now of you know, no new young readers coming into this. We tried to sound the alarm uh, a long time ago, five years ago, at the very least, probably uh, earlier than that, and uh, shunned, ignored, called all sorts of names. So we said, "Screw it, we'll go off and do it ourselves." And you know, the the people in the mainstream, the people pulling the strings, the people holding the reins, they didn't like that. Any dissent, uh, you know, if you're a dissenter, you're called a bigot. People are discouraged to uh, you know go and support you creators especially are discouraged from abandoning the sinking ship and going out and doing it on their own but um if we go back to this tweet here by liam he says he's talking about his numbers here that's in all of north america and the uk ultimately a tiny number of readers in the grand scale confirmed it is so hard to reach people uh, comicsgate noticed that five years ago how difficult it is when you aren't on a batman book or a spider-man book or a superman book or an x-men book how hard it is to reach new readers we banded together because there's strength in numbers we discovered um we discovered that youtube is the best way that we can get our message out and sell books that method was recently vindicated in a spectacular fashion by Eric July, who managed to sell $3.7 million worth of comics to his own YouTube audience. Um, but 
as for Liam, I mean, you've got a big name. You are one of the most celebrated artists working today. You haven't been cancelled. So the way I see it, there's really nothing standing in your way to finding success in the indies. I had a comment the other day, however, on a uh, video I did about the new Iron Age, uh, creator-owned comics that are completely going their own way, not not relying on anything that exists in the mainstream. And uh, someone left a comment and said, is there even really interest, though, in this alternative or indie content? Which I thought was a really thought-provoking question. It's something that we don't ask uh, often enough. You know, demand for the indies has always been small in, you know, in relation to the mainstream. That's why they're the indies and the mainstream is the mainstream. The mainstream just means popular. Um, but it is growing. It's absolutely growing in certain pockets of the internet. So what you have to do is you have to find your way into those pockets where the interest for this stuff is growing. Jasper's got a tweet here. Jasper from the chat. He says the direct market is broken. Sell directly to your customers like you did with the Kickstarter art book. Yeah, he made 100000 on that thing. Offer bells and whistles, SIGs, remarks, merch. Keep all of your money. Exactly. The, the entire, in my opinion, the entire single issue direct market system is propped up by speculators. It's a broke, Jess was right. It's a broken system. There is very little demand for that. And it's diminishing year by year. Uh, the real readers, the real readers who are actually interested in the story. I think he had some numbers here. Where were they? Let's go back here. Um, yeah, they, these readers here, uh, where are they here? Scroll up a bit. Uh, yeah, these here are your real readers, the ones that are continuing on. These are the people that were actually interested in what you were doing. These numbers here, these 39K, that's collectors. They're the people who were interested in having, holding on to the single issue exclusive for, you know, some potential big uh, Netflix series, uh, you know, a few years down the future. All the growth, as I see it, in uh, and demand in actual stories, in readership, is happening in graphic novels and trades. The vast majority of it happens in bookstores and through thing, places like Scholastic, things like that. It doesn't, the, the single issue thing, the way it was always being done, the speculator market, all that sort of stuff, it doesn't translate really in a big way anymore in the indies. Uh, and actually, even most of the mainstream, it doesn't work anymore. You see big titles selling 50,000, big names selling less than 50,000 copies. It's it, the, the single market, uh, the single issue market to me, I think it's, I think it's going away. Instead, look to France, look to Manga, look what they're doing. So the question you're left with then is what is going to work for you? What's going to be able to make it possible for you to create comic books is it is it cheaper more frequent books going out to a slightly larger audience or is it less frequent but more expensive books sold to a smaller audience and remember with the cheap items to the larger audience as well very importantly you're paying middlemen lots of middlemen along the way that exist between you and the reader whether that's distributors or retailers or whatever it is editors i don't know who it is if, like Jasper said back here, if you sell directly to your audience, you get to keep all of that money. Uh, there was a, another tweet here that says uh, from Ashton, who says, that's why I believe it's better to do crowdfund a graphic novel. Set the goal what you need. It's more work, but you also know what you'll get and what you need. And if it doesn't fund, you can just try again on a different platform. Now, Liam responded to this. He said, uh, my orders on Kickstarter for Encore Silver were 800 copies. That's it. And as Jasper points out, you know, starting out 800 copies is a decent number crowdfunding because you remember you're keeping all of the cash when once you've got it published, once you've got it produced and shipped, you get to keep the rest of the cash yourself. That's something to grow on. So you've got to ask yourself, why are you making comics? Is it are you making comics that you can make a living, potentially get rich? Or is it because you want, you have the ego thing and you want, I want to sell 100,000 uh, copies or 30,000 or 50,000? Um, keeping in mind that those numbers, 
most likely the large portion of them aren't even reading your thing. They're just collecting it so that they can have, I say, I have that number one issue. Really, uh, when it comes to establishing, establishing yourself as a sustainable uh, creator who can work in the indies, it's set out there. You really, all you need is, uh, you know, a thousand loyal paying customers as the minimum. I mean, some people manage to get three, four, five thousand ripper. We don't know exactly how many long term is going to have, but it's probably going to be in the uh, tens of thousands, which is incredible. That's why he's making so much money. He's got these loyal paying customers who were there to support him. And that's really all you need. Gabe uh, El Taib, who is the colorist on ISOM, uh, works for Ripper there. He says to Liam, you are a genius artist. I love your work. If you focus on building a YouTube, you can really open things up. It's working for those who stay committed to talking to, befriending, entertaining fans directly on YouTube, social media. It's a lot of work, but it pays off. Liam responded to this saying, I'm afraid I'll never be a YouTube guy. It's never going to be me. I don't have enough time to do all the things I love, but thanks for the suggestion. Liam, Liam's work is exquisite. If you're not familiar with his work, please do go check it out. It's some of the most beautiful artwork you will see being produced in comics today. I understand if you really want to, if that's your passion and you got to sink all of your uh, time and effort into the creation of what you're doing, I understand that. Um, we figured out that YouTube is the best way to market our indie books that, you know, but it's not necessarily the only way. I, 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 I maintain that having a mailing list and growing a mailing, mailing list and building it up is enough. Uh, you really just have to have an online presence, build momentum. Like you said, like you start with those 800 backers, try and double it next time, get to 1600. That's more than enough to make a decent chunk of change from, especially you've got all these other items and extra things that you can sell merch along the way. The alt scene may be small now, but no one really knows how big it can grow. This uh, crowdfunding, crowd selling, online marketplace, people say it's not sustainable, it's not scalable. Yes, we don't have the infrastructure yet to move hundreds of thousands of books a month, sure. But it's, you know, it's questionable even the, the, if there's demand out there for tens of thousands of books in the direct market. So I wouldn't worry about it. The, 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 the people that exist out there on the internet, you know, for us, functionally infinite number of people compared to this dwindling single issue direct market model, it's trapped in physical brick and mortar uh, stores and conventions, it's constricted. It's constricted. Uh, whereas if you go online and you build that demand, you be smart about it, inspiring, entertaining. If the demand exists out there for what you're producing, and I guarantee there is plenty of demand out there for an artist and writer like Liam, uh, surely we can figure out a way at that point to um, get the supply to catch up speed with the uh, demand that we're building. Speaking of demand, uh, I've got a thousand signups for this. It's my book, The Lucent Painted Death Graphic Novel. Uh, please do sign up for exclusive discounts and perks at launch. I will be giving away five uh, exclusive cover, exclusive covers, this cover right here, actually, to anyone who signs up. You don't have to back it. I'll be doing that on launch day. This is where the mystery, the hit mystery thriller continues. This is the sequel to my first book, Waking Dream. And I'm so excited to be able to bring this to you in 2023. All right, guys, what did you think? Uh, what do you think of what's happening there to uh, Liam? I mean, this is a this is a tragedy. This guy is a super talent. This should not be happening. Uh, but there is a solution. We've we've seen that. We've seen it work now for five years straight. Uh, you know, he can get Liam could be a big name, big name in indie comics if he just detached himself from this this uh you know publisher direct market thing that's my belief anyway what do you guys think please leave a comment uh in the section there and let me know your thoughts on it and if you like the video give it a like consider subscribing consider becoming a member you're helping to pay for the creation of brand new comics as we speak all right that's it for me i will see you next time bye